Hey everybody, it's Boomfed here, and you might be wondering why are we in Windows when it's gonna be something concerning our server? Well, we're gonna con I'm gonna show you how to connect to your server from uh, Windows uh, with a thing called Putty, and Putty is going to be our SSH or secure shell. Um, something that I or will be going to download. I'm just a fight of Firefox, but it's, it's taking a while. And it might be because I'm. Uh, wait, let me just do one thing. Exit that one. Because that also takes up memory. Memory we can use. Alright, so we're gonna go putty. And putty is there. Right, so we can download Putty there. So just go to uh, putty.org, click on the top one. And basically, what you want is you want that one, that entire thing, because we don't need Putty Tell. Putty Tell is Telnet only. And um, what we do need Pageant and Putty Gen. So go with the installer, that's the easiest. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save that there, yes. There we go. I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna install it in C programs putty, that's fine. What you could alternatively do is keep all the server files together. And just call it C server party. Uh, associate PPK files, yes. Uh, create desktop, um, no, that's not necessary because we're going to do something else for that. So install that. Just going to wait. No, don't need to read me. We can leave this. I'm going to start it up. In the last video, I sh showed you my IP address, but it's actually changed because otherwise I cannot get into it. So this one should be correct. we get this we'll say yes we do so we're gonna log in this time we're gonna log in as spoonfed uh, I forgot the password actually <laughs> yes there we go and there we have it and we even have mail so we're gonna cat var mail uh, uh, no, sorry spoonfed so there we go This is a rate status update. Uh, report. Cool. So that's what you can see. Root at spoonfed local. Um, that's all not necessary. But this right here should already be a moment for you where you're going, Yes, I installed my server correctly. That's hands down. Alright. We're going to make that a lot easier and. Um, we need to do a couple of steps for that. Um, one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do putty gen. So putty gen. We don't have a key. We're gonna generate a public private key. So here we need to do some weird movements here. Do do do. All right. So now copy this entire thing. Uh, without the sorry, without the RSA. So copy that. We'll copy that, and we're gonna move that into a Notepad because we need it. Um, you're gonna generate a key phrase. So you're gonna um, just this is gonna be a password for um, like unlocking the key, as it were. So you can make this whatever you want. Um, just so I need to remember this as well, of course. Uh, I'll just do it like that. And then we're gonna save this key right there. Um, we're gonna save it in C server. 
I'm gonna call this thing private key. So there we go. So we saved it. Uh, you can leave this hanging around, it doesn't really matter. Uh, important to do the SSH RSA, not DSA, RSA. And you can do this 1024 or you can do this 2048, but 1024 is easily more than enough. Now we're gonna log in to our um, host. So we're gonna do 168111 like that. We're gonna open it. We're gonna log in as our normal character, or sorry, user, not character. Um, nah, you could call them a character, of course. Right, so we're gonna clear this. We're gonna make their um, slash home slash spoonfed dot sh, and then in that there, we're gonna make a thing called authorized keys. All right, and in authorized keys. We got this notepad thing going on here. Copy that, and how you're gonna paste it in Putty is just by right clicking. So right click, boom, and it's in. Keep it like that. So SSH RZ space all the way to the end. Want to hit Control X? Yes for saving. Enter for the file name, and that's it. Now we're going to test this connection, actually. Uh, we can uh, remove this. No, we don't need to save it. Um, yeah, we, we can keep this hanging around for now. It's okay. We're going to test this connection by opening up another party instance. We're going to go to data. We're going to say auto login with name spoonfed or whatever your name was that you chose, of course. Um, when username is not specified, then prompt. But we're gonna auto log in within the username. We're gonna go into SSH off, and we're gonna say use a key file. So the key file that we that we made. So server private key. All right, that's one. Do we need to do anything else now? Um, you can do this, but no. Uh, so we got that, 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 that. yeah, and now we're here. We're gonna do 192.168.1.1 and we're going to say open. Connection fused. Did I do the wrong address or? Let me see data spoon fat as each auth private key go open. Yeah, sorry, I probably made a typo. Could happen. All right, so now you need to um, tell them the passphrase for this key, which is that in my case. And I'm logged in. So now we know that the keys work, they are communicating with each other, and everything is um, hunky dory, fine and dandy. Right, so we're gonna, we're gonna close this original one. We're gonna keep this one. Oh no, we're gonna keep that one. close that one as well, and we're gonna close that one. So now we're gonna use another one. Uh, we're gonna make a. Uh, we're gonna do two, th two things. What's the easiest way to do this? Uh, no, get a notepad up. You're gonna go into C server or whatever you're gonna install Putty, and you're gonna right click here, and you're gonna say properties. Uh, oh, no, that's not what I want. Uh, no, nah, I'll do it differently. We'll do it like so. And then we're going to pageant.exe. And behind that, we're going to do server private key.ppk. Basically, what this is what you want you want to have 
the location of your pageant.exe and you want to have the location of your private key.ppk or the pkk actually. Yeah, it's ppk. So, um, that's basically it. What we're going to do this is we're going to copy this. We're going to make a new shortcut. We're going to do that because that's the location. Next, we're going to call this secure uh, server, sorry, server connection finish. All right, so we got a secure server connection. We're going to double click that. It's going to ask us for passphrase. And then we got a character here in, in the bottom right. Right mouse click, new session. And this is where things are going to get cool because we're going to see this is already done. And this is just not done. So we're going to do this in Spoonfed. Um, no, here's the same. We're going to use the private key and session 168.1.1. I'm going to save it as our secure session. So we're going to save that. So now what we can do is we're going to get cancel there. Right mouse, new session, double click secure session, and you're automatically logged in. That simple. So now we set up our um, connection to our server in a secure way and in an easy way. We just double click, and if we want to, we want another instance. Uh, right mouse button, new session. You can even save the sessions. That you want um, all kinds of stuff that you can do so that's it for this video about um, setting up SSH on a Windows box it all this stuff isn't very applicable on a Linux server because on a Linux server you wouldn't have to do all these things um, because you already have open SSH on there you can just do SSH and then connect to the server and that's about as simple as it gets. But on Windows, yeah, you gotta little bit, do a little bit extra. So um, that's that step two, actually, for connecting to our server.